Welcome to Weather Extra on CBSN Bay Area. I'm KPIX 5 meteorologist Paul Hagen. Every week, we're taking a closer look at a weather topic, a deeper dive than what we can do within our daily weather casts on KPIX. This week, I'm going to focus on the rainy October we've seen in the Bay Area, how it has impacted drought conditions, if at all, and whether a wet October is a harbinger of an above average rainy season. Last week's parade of storm systems is way ahead of schedule for the Bay Area. Our average rainfall in the month of October is less than one inch. Usually as we head deeper into November and December, we start to see more frequent and heavier rain events. Now we're certainly not complaining about the early season storms, but this has been exceptional. In the span of just seven days, the Bay Area picked up significant and even record-setting amounts of rain. The atmospheric river that I talked about in last week's weather extra certainly delivered for the Bay Area. In fact, it was a little too much rain, with some flooding issues Sunday and Sunday night especially. And talk about weather whiplash. We went from tracking a wildfire in the Santa Cruz Mountains on Friday, October 15th, to talking about debris flow and flash flooding threats in the same location just a week later. It was a similar story in Sacramento, which experienced its wettest day on record on Sunday, shortly after experiencing its longest consecutive dry spell on record. That kind of rapid change is something we can expect more frequently thanks to the influence of climate change. Dr. Daniel Swain is a climate scientist with the National Centers for Atmospheric Research. He also writes the Weather West blog. He's a great scientist to follow on Twitter. Back in 2018, he co-authored an article that appeared in the scientific journal Nature called Increasing Precipitation Volatility in 21st Century California. That research team found that climate change is likely to lead to large 21st century increases in the frequency of wet extremes, but increases in dry extremes are also likely. They project anywhere from a 25% to a 100% increase in extreme dry to wet precipitation events like we just had, despite only small changes in average precipitation throughout the year as a whole. Mediterranean climates, like California's, like the Bay Area's, are especially susceptible to rapid shifts between drought and flood, so that kind of intensification would seriously challenge California's water storage, water transport, and flood control infrastructure. So here's the million dollar question. How much did the recent rain improve drought conditions? This is what last week's drought map looked like, with extreme to exceptional drought across the entire Bay Area. The latest update from the U.S. Drought Monitor shows extreme to exceptional drought across the Bay Area. Now, we did see some improvement in the North Bay where the exceptional drought did shrink. 83% of the state is in extreme drought overall, with 39% in exceptional drought. That's the worst category. It's a 4% drop in extreme drought and a 7% decrease in exceptional drought, but we just saw an extraordinary and record-setting rain event, so why haven't things improved more? As I talked about in a weather extra segment back in late July, we need a full rainy season of average or above average precipitation and possibly more than one such season. Last weekend storm was a great start, but we need Mother Nature to follow that up with still more rain. So as we look ahead to the 2021-2022 rainy season that just got started, it's natural to wonder does an abnormally wet October signal an abnormally wet rainy season as a whole? I dove into the historical data and I was pleasantly surprised by what I found. I used rainfall data for downtown San Francisco for a couple of reasons. It's essentially the north to south midpoint of the Bay Area, and it has the longest historical climate record dating back to 1850. When downtown San Francisco receives at least two inches of rain in October, there's a statistically weak, but non-zero, the trend line goes up, correlation to a wetter subsequent rainy season. And of the 26 times that downtown San Francisco picked up two inches or more of October rain, there were only two significantly dry rainy seasons that followed when rainfall was more than one standard deviation below average. Those are hopeful statistics, but of course they don't mean that a normal or above normal rainy season is locked in for us. This is going to be another La Nina winter like last year. In fact, the Climate Prediction Center has already issued a La Nina advisory for the upcoming winter. Both Darren Peck and I have talked about the effects of La Nina on the Bay Area's weather in previous weather extra segments. So I'm not going to go into too much detail here. But the bottom line is that while La Nina winters can be wet, dry or normal for the Bay Area, the recent climate changed influence trend has been that La Nina tends to push the storm track farther north into the Pacific Northwest. The latest three-month outlook from the Climate Prediction Center for December, January, and February, what we define as meteorological winter, reflects that La Nina effect. It shows a good chance of above average rainfall in the Pacific Northwest, a good chance of below average rainfall for Southern California, 
a weaker signal towards below average rainfall for the Bay Area. So where does that leave us? The good news is that we're off to a great start. We've already picked up as much rain in the first month of the water year as we should normally see in the first three months. The presence of La Nina this winter does temper my optimism. I really think it's going to come down to how much rain we can add up between now and the end of 2021. La Nina will likely take hold over the winter and push our weather patterns in a drier direction. But if we can add up a nice amount of additional rain in November and December, that would help to mitigate the impact of a drier January and February. But as with everything in long range forecasting, ultimately, we just have to wait and see. That's it for this week's Weather Extra. Meteorologist Aaron Peck will be back next week to cover another topic, and we are inviting you to play a role. If you have a weather or climate question, just email it to weatherextra at kpix.cbs.com.